wonderful to be together on this Zoom screen with you for worship this morning. I've been so encouraged by the space with you all week after week, so I just want to thank all of you for all of the things you've done to make this feel like UCY even in these strange times. We are a church of all kinds and we welcome you to come just as you are, whether you are newly joining us or you've been here with us every week. I hope that you take this worship time and make it yours. We love to see your faces on the Zoom screen, of course, but feel free to leave your camera off. Also feel free to stay in your pajamas or make another cup of coffee. This Sunday is another Sunday in Epiphany. In the Christian church, the season of Epiphany is traditionally a time when we think about God's call on our lives. This morning, we will be thinking about models in our Christian faith who have followed God's call, including the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So we'll have a service full of readings, lovely music, including some live music, and I will be preaching. So as you know, I'm a student intern at the Divinity School. I've gotten so many chances to learn and practice some skills with all of you. Um, preaching is something that I would like to work on. So I would love to hear some critical feedback from you all, if you are willing um, to send me some constructive feedback on my preaching, either in a private DM in the chat or in an email. Um, Phoebe is posting my email in the chat right now. So as we go together into worship this morning, I invite you to unmute and join me in our call to worship. I will leave the parts that say one, and I invite you to join unmuted in the parts that say all. Let us worship. We come to worship today just as we are, trusting that our limitless God unites us in one spirit. We come to you to praise your wonderful works. Speak, Lord, for we are listening. listening. You know our lives in their fullness. You call us to the limits of our longings. You are a God of new beginnings and persistent hope. Our world. Amen. Amen. I invite you to remute yourself and join us in our opening hymn, Listen, God is Calling. Listen, listen, God is calling through the world inviting, offering forgiveness. Jesus gave the mandate, share the good news that he came to save us and set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness. be forgotten throughout the world in the triune name of God go and baptize listen listen God is calling through the word inviting offering forgiveness us to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts, led by your word. And now uh, it's time to greet each other in the peace of Christ. Uh, so I invite you 
Uh, you can unmute if you like, uh, but I'd also invite you to, uh, however you want to greet each other, with your hands, uh, with your voice, uh, but let's share the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you all. And you can say, and also, and also, also, with, also, with, also with you. Also with you. With you all, everybody. Great to see peace. you. Peace, peace to all. Peace. Morning. Peace. Morning. Peace. Good morning, everyone. Everybody. Peace. God bless. Blessings. Good morning, everybody. Today, I will be singing the illumination with my sister, Mary Margaret. Um, so I will sing the top part once through. Mary Margaret will sing the bottom part once through. And then we will sing it together three times. And we invite you to sing along with us on mute. All right, here's the top part. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has dawned upon you. And the bottom part. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has dawned upon you. And now we'll sing it together three times and invite you to sing along with us on mute. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has dawned upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has dawned upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has dawned upon you. Um, I'm Elaine and I teach at Bucknell University in the Department of Theater and Dance. It's great to be with you all. Our reading today is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm Beth Riley Roman, and um, I'm not currently um, a, a Yale um, member, so to speak, um, but Jim and I have been members of the UCY 
for just one year now. And in the past, um, I, I'm an alum from the nursing school and um, served on the faculty as well. And this morning, our gospel reading is from the book of John, chapter one, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom, about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. This is the good news of the gospel. Praise to Praise you, to you O Christ. O Christ. Amen. Thank you for reading those stories so well, Beth and Elaine. There's a little balcony outside my bedroom window, up on the third floor of my apartment. Some nights when the noise of the world gets too loud, I like to crawl out there and just sit for a moment. Usually there's a lot going on outside this window, but when the sun goes down, everything changes. Over the dark treetops and rooftops, I can see all the way downtown to the lights of New Haven. And I can even see the bridge over the New Haven Harbor. There's a sort of aliveness to the night, a buzzing sound of silence that covers everything like a blanket. As I sit there in the darkness and look out over my city, I think about how strange it is that even in the corruption and hurt of the world, that the quiet darkness of night still comes. The night knows nothing about riots at the Capitol building, about global pandemics, or about corrupt politics. I feel like if God did want to speak to me about where to go in these confusing times, that up above the trees in this quiet night would be the place. But we know from our stories of King Samuel and of the disciples from our readings today and of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on this eve of his national holiday that God doesn't always call us in the ways that we expect. King Samuel didn't expect to hear from God in this wonderful darkness of night where we meet him in our story. But I imagine he must have treasured the quiet of night as much as I do in the midst of his hurting world. We're told in our story that he lived in a time when, to quote our Bible passage, the word of the Lord was rare and the visions were not widespread. In other words, people didn't know what the heck was going on. They may have been asking what many of us are asking today. Where is God in all of this? Could God have a plan for me in this hurting world? 
Samuel had to discern God's call in the midst of turmoil. Previous chapters tell, tell us that even though his father Eli was the high priest and his family had a history of great faith, that Samuel's brothers had taken to corruption. As sons of the high priest, they took full advantage of their privilege and power. They profited off of the poor. They took advantage of women and they lifted themselves up by pressing other people down. These brothers had the power to cause harm because of their father's position as the high priest. They used God's name to harm others. In the quiet of night, I can imagine Samuel asking the starry sky, God, what is your will for me in all of this? People are hurting and my brothers spread untruth about your name. In my own quiet nights, I can relate. When I saw images of banners that read Jesus saves at the insurgent attack at the Capitol last week, I thought, who is this Jesus that inspires hate? Where is the truth about my God? The turmoil and untruth around us can get so overwhelming that sometimes I feel like giving up on the idea that God would still bother to speak to such a world, let alone that God would speak to me. But even in turmoil and untruth, God breaks into Samuel's silent night with a shout, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel, of course, doesn't realize the shout is from God, but that's okay. Samuel will get another chance. He runs to Eli. Eli says, nope, that wasn't me. And Samuel goes back to bed. But again, he hears this voice, Samuel, Samuel. And again, and again, he runs to Eli. By the third time, Eli discerns that this must be the voice of God. So the next time that Samuel heard God call his name, he made the choice to believe that God was speaking to him. He said the words that would change everything. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. These words were the key that opened the door to God's vision of a better world. By choosing to respond to God's call, Samuel learned of God's plans to liberate the oppressed in his community and to lift Samuel up as a faithful leader. He would go on to be one of the most important prophets in Jewish history. True to God's words, the rest of the story tells us that Samuel would keep choosing to seek God's call and be a great ruler of Israel. When Samuel chose to respond to God's call in the middle of that night, he learned that God was not willing to sit idly by while God's people suffered. God was not willing to turn away at the sight of untruth. God had an idea of a world where an elite few would not acquire comfort off of the many who were suffering, where justice and mercy would rule over greed, where the oppressed would be relieved of their suffering. God shouts to Samuel in the middle of this night because God not only shares this idea of the world with God's people, but God calls us to make it happen. Samuel's story tells us that all we need to do is choose to believe that God is speaking to us, even when it seems like the word of the Lord is rare and the visions are not widespread. Fast forward a few hundreds of years and we are with Jesus and the disciples in our gospel story today. We're told that Jesus came right up to the disciples and simply said, follow me. Philip and the other disciples had been studying their scripture, so they recognized Jesus as soon as they saw him. They ran to their buddy Nathaniel and said to him, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the one we've been waiting for. Our story tells us that Nathaniel responded, of Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Yes, Nathaniel, good can come from Nazareth. See, Nazareth was considered poor and dirty at this time. Nathaniel doubted Jesus at first because of cruel lies that were said about his birthplace. But thank goodness for second chances, Nathaniel did follow Jesus and go on to see for himself that Jesus of Nazareth 
was the one who had come to save all. Even though it took a couple of tries, Nathaniel made the choice not to believe in the cruel untruth about Nazareth, but to believe that this man was indeed Christ and that Christ was calling him to be a disciple. Samuel and the disciples leave us a legacy of those who made the choice to believe that God was calling them, even in the midst of turmoil and untruth. Even though they didn't quite get it right the first time, or even the second time, God met them right where they were and shared a vision of a better world with them. When I think about this legacy of those who chose to believe that God was calling them, even in the midst of turmoil and untruth, I'm reminded of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now, when we talk about King, it's important to remember that he was a black preacher who was raised in and sustained by the black church, who wrote, spoke, and organized particularly for his black community. Even though we at UCY today are removed from King's time and from his community, we can still learn from King's powerful legacy of choosing to seek God's call, even in the turmoil and untruth around him. King believed that God's call in his life was to act as a spiritual force for social change. He spoke often about following what he called the religion of Jesus of Nazareth. He followed the religion of those who, like in Samuel's world, were harmed by those in power. He followed the religion of the people of Nazareth, who in the disciples' world, when others heard of their origin said, what good can come of there? He followed the religion of the people who suffered unjustly under years of slavery, Jim Crow, police brutality, and white supremacy. What could King's legacy of choosing the call of Jesus of Nazareth tell us, people at UCY who gather here this Sunday in the wake of violence at the Capitol, through anxieties about our health and safety, awaiting a transfer of presidential power, and in the midst of deep national divides? King's legacy tells us that we have a choice to make, just like Samuel and the disciples made a choice to believe that God is still calling in the midst of turmoil and untruth, and a choice to respond to this call. In the spring of 1967, exactly one year before he died, King preached about this choice in a sermon at Riverside Church in New York. He used this sermon to speak out against the Vietnam War. Many were surprised and angry when King spoke out against the war. He was told that he should stick to just speaking out about domestic affairs like the civil rights movement, but not about national affairs like the war. Some called the sermon King's most important speech of his life and others called it his biggest mistake. But preaching the sermon was King's choice to respond to the call that he felt from God in the midst of the turmoil and untruth that he witnessed. When King gave the sermon, the Vietnam War was taking a violent downhill turn and anti-war sentiments raged throughout the nation. The nation was filled with anger, fear, division, and injustice, paralleling what we see today. In his sermon, King said that he felt that his only choice was to speak out when he did, that this was his moment to respond to the call of Jesus of Nazareth. King chose to follow this call and to speak out against the war because, to quote the sermon, he was compelled by his obedience to the one who loved his enemies so fully that he died for them. I have to wonder if, before this sermon, God shouted King's name in the middle of the night, or showed up like a mysterious man from Nazareth and said, follow me. Or if God found King looking out his bedroom window one night at the lights of a quiet city over treetops and rooftops, grieving the pain in his world. However it happened, King made the choice to believe that God was not done with his hurting world yet. We too can choose to believe that God calls each of us, even as we face division, fear, violence, injustice, 
and just being plain old tired of this pandemic. We can choose to believe that God has an idea of a better world and that God calls each of us to bring that world into reality. We each have this choice. We may be like wise old Eli who helps others to know when God is calling them. We may be like the disciples who were studying and preparing for the moment that Christ would appear so that they could recognize him. We may be like Nathaniel, who took an uncertain chance to follow Jesus of Nazareth. We may be like King, who spoke out against the injustice he witnessed. But when I sit on my balcony at night and feel the weight of these difficult times, I think I may be like Samuel, who didn't know exactly what to do and simply said, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. You and I are a part of this legacy of children of God who chose to believe that God has a call for each of us that is worth seeking, that God has always had and will always have a better way, a way of justice and mercy. We are not the first to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. We are not alone in saying, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. We are a part of a legacy of those who said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. It is because of this legacy that we can make the choice to believe that each of us are a part of God's will for a better world. We must choose God's call despite the turmoil and untruth around us. And we must choose God's call because of the turmoil and untruth around us. God gives us each the choice to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. King's sermon at Riverside Church was not only his choice to believe in the call of Jesus of Nazareth, but it was also his way to call the nation to join him in making this choice. I'd like to leave you all this morning with a quote from this sermon. King preached, and if we will only make the right choice, we will be able to transform this pending cosmic elegy into a creative psalm of peace. If we will make the right choice, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our worlds into a beautiful symphony of siblinghood. If we will but make the right choice, we will be able to speed up the day all over America and all over the world when justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Amen. Amen.
And now it's time for our prayers for the day. So much to pray about, a wonderful message to inspire us, a beautiful song. Uh, during our prayers, I'll, I will say uh, a, a prompt. I will say, God of mercy. I'll invite you to respond, still muted, and say, hear our prayer. So I'll say, God of mercy, if you'll respond, hear our prayer. So now I invite you to join together as one people in many places as we pray to God. Hear our prayer, God of mercy. As we pray, Join our hearts to your great, compassionate, justice-loving heart. Help us feel your love for, all, for us today, each of us and all of us. And help us feel your promise for the future, especially if we're feeling discouraged. Give us renewed faith in all the bad news and all the scary events. Our temptation, oh God, is sometimes to despair or give up. Give us faith in you, faith in each other, and faith in the future. Make us a people not easily discouraged and light the fire of struggle and perseverance in us. And I say, God of mercy, and you say, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, God of mercy, we pray for a peaceful inauguration day in the United States on Wednesday. Stay the hearts and the hands of the extremists. Protect the public servants who carry out their duties. Unite the United States in prayer for justice, equality, and neighborliness. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, God of mercy, help us Rediscover the power and depth of your American prophet, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on his birthday holiday tomorrow. As we face the national reckoning with systemic and militant racism, we thank you for him. Help us turn to him for wisdom, direction, and Christian faith in difficult times. Give our nation as a whole a spirit of discernment as we seek both justice and unity love, and truth. Give us strength and hope for the long struggle ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, God of mercy. Have mercy on those who are sick with COVID-19, those who love and care for them, on those in the long recovery. Have mercy on our exhausted healthcare workers and on those who have died. Thank you for all the vaccines that have been received. 10 months into this, Lord, many of us are tired and discouraged. Help us not to judge ourselves, but still seek ways to stretch our love and concern and care and safety for our neighbors. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, God of mercy, watch over and guide Yale students, faculty, and staff who are getting ready for a new semester in this tumultuous season. Help us seize the chance to rest in the coming two weeks where it's offered. But most of all, help us reimagine how Yale might be better in a second full Zoom semester and how we can put people before processes or calendars or grades. God of mercy, hear our prayer. And I invite you, if you wish, to unmute or stay muted and join me in the prayer Jesus taught using whatever language or translation is closest to your heart. We put the traditional translation in the chat. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Be done. On earth as it is in heaven, heaven. give us this, bless this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we trespass against us. Not deliver us from the evil one. Thy kingdom, power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now uh, for our closing hymn, we'll sing one of Martin Luther King's favorites, uh, Precious Lord. And as it's played, I'll invite you, if you wish, muted, 
to sing along. Welcome everybody here to UCY. I, I don't know about you all, but I am overwhelmed by the music and the words and everything we've heard this morning. It's been a very beautiful service. I'd like to welcome any newcomers. Um, we are so happy that you've joined us today and there will be a link put in the chat um, for a visitor form. So if you'd like to fill that out, I think we are still um, mailing out t-shirts. Um, we would love to uh, get your information. Um, I wanna thank Natalie for that beautiful sermon. Thank you so much. Um, that was really, really moving. And thank you to Megan and Mary Margaret Stoll for your uh, live music this morning. It's always a blessing to have some live um, reality in Zoom world. Um, and thank you to Elaine and Beth for reading. Thank you to our pianist Rebecca for her beautiful solo and um, playing. Thank you, Ian, for those prayers. Thank you to everybody for being here. Uh, UCY wouldn't be anything without all of your presence. Um, I'd like to uh, give an update on the quilt project that I had mentioned um, a couple months back now. Um, if you signed up, you should have received something in the mail, um, unless you live in Germany, like Umberto, um, or maybe California hasn't quite, it hasn't quite gone out there yet. Um, but be on the lookout for um, your instructions for the quilt project in the mail. And a reminder, if you have any questions about that, you can email me. And if you missed the sign up for that project, please email me. We might be able to still include you um, because as I, as I mentioned, we're still, uh, the mail is still going out to Umberto. So we might be able to get some domestic mailing still in. Um, 
And I'm hoping that we can get the quilt made and resurrected on Easter. That's, that's the goal. Um, this morning we will be offering our um, donations to the Christian Community Action. During the pandemic, we have been urging UCY to send their offerings directly to local charities. And CCA, Christian Community Action, does remarkable work on housing, hunger, justice, and advocacy in New Haven's poorest neighborhoods. Um, the link should be posted in the chat for donation details. In honor of tomorrow's holiday, we're happy to include a special post salute today, our very own Nat Gums in concert playing Carl Haywood's improvisation on We Shall Overcome. It's a little longer than our usual post salute, but we urge you to stay on and hear this inspiring piece. Afterwards, as always, we will have a community gathering. We invite you to join us. We would love to hear your voices and um, be together for a time of casual, informal fellowship. I now ask people to unmute and join me in the benediction. With what shall I come before the Lord? And bow myself to God, 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 God has told you, O oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord, Lord require of you? But to do justice. To do justice. To do justice. And to love kindness. To love, to love kindness. kindness. And to walk humbly with your God. To, to walk, walk humbly with your God. God. Amen. 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 The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the mm -hmm. blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.